second session integrated science grade 7 uh, 2019 examination paper revision lesson we are continuing we our first question is question 26 in this session question 26 reads mines have contributed to the pollution of the environment through a noise and emissions b Floods and garbage, C. Drought and rainfall, D. Air and lightning. Okay, mines produce a lot of sounds and a lot of smoke. We don't have floods. B. Flood says floods and garbage. We may have floods, but not fl floods from the rains. May they use water there, but they do not cause floods. Then D. Drought and rainfall, we don't have rainfall from uh, mines. And D, air and lightning, we don't have lightning in mines. So our best option there is A, Pollu uh, pollution caused from noise and emissions. D, the th uh, 27, the thermometers below show temperatures of four different people. A thermometer used on the body will tell the body's temperature. So which of the thermometers shows the temperatures of a person with high fever? When a thermometer is used, the mercury in it, that liquid in it, will raise to indicate how the body temperature of that person is. The higher the mercury rises, that is how the body temperature is so in our first thermometer we have the mercury reading at 36.5 then in option two we have our mercury raising at 30 37 38.5 and then in mercury number uh, thermometer number three we have it raising at 38 degrees celsius and in the fourth thermometer, we have it at 39.5 degrees Celsius. So the thermometer that is showing the, the person with a high fever is thermometer number four, which is option D in our answer, because the temperature there shows 39.5. We move on to question 28. Question 28 says, study the life cycle of a frog below. The life cycle here looks like something like this. That is what we have there on our diagram. Okay. Then what is X in the life cycle above? That is an adult frog. An adult frog will lay eggs in water. The eggs will hatch in water, then they will develop into tadipos. These still have tails, they are not uh, fully developed as adult frogs. Then we have an adult frog there, and the circle continues. Let's look at our options. We are looking for what is X there. Option A says A, and option B, laying X. C, mating, and D, tadipo. So our best answer there is D. 
that is the tadpole. Question 29. Which of the following is an illicit drug? We have A, penicillin, B, panadol, C, cocaine, D, aspirin. We are looking for an illicit drug. These are drugs that are not allowed. They are prohibited to have them anywhere because they are illicit drugs. Penicillin, Panadol, and Aspirin, these are drugs given by the doctor at the hospital. These are on-the-counter drugs. So drugs that are illicit, these are drugs that are prohibited. This is now gives us the uh, best option C. That is cocaine. Okay. Then we come to question 30. Question 30. Airborne diseases can be prevented by A. Closing windows. B. Good ventilation. C. Going to the clinic. And D. Sleeping in a treated mosquito net. First of all, let's understand what an airborne disease is. An airborne disease is a disease that occurs when a bacteria or a virus travels in air. These can be droplets or dust that is in the air released by a person when they cough or laugh. So these are airborne diseases. Now, the, how can we prevent these airborne diseases? From our options there, we have A, closing windows, B, good ventilation, going to the clinic, and sleeping in a, a treated mosquito net. Closing windows will not help us have enough fresh air, and bacteria or the, the, this airborne disease will be roaming around in the room. Good ventilation, this will allow fresh air to come in the room, and bacteria will not stay where there is fresh air. They will always want to be where there is warmth and the air that is dense. And C, going to the clinic. Yes, when we are sick, we go to the clinic. But how can we prevent that illness before we go to the clinic? Our best option there is uh, B, having good ventilation. 31. Which of the following is the main source of drinking water supply in urban areas? In urban areas, the source, the, the best source of drinking water. Our options, we have A, wells, and B, we have taps, C, we have dams, and D, boreholes. In urban areas, these are town places. Mostly we have tap water. So our best option there is B. That is our answer there. Then 32. Which of the four chambers of the heart pumps blood to the lungs? Which of the four chambers of the heart pumps blood to the lungs. First of all, we must understand how blood travel or moves in the body. I'll just draw something like a heart. Okay, something like that. That is our heart.
Okay. That is how blood will move. That is blood circulation. So the vena cover there, this is the other parts of the body. The vena cover will receive deoxygenated blood to the heart. Then it will move. Uh, the, the, uh, the blood will move out of the heart from the pulmonary artery to the lungs, where gaseous exchange will happen there. Oxygen, the, the, vessel, the veins will receive oxygen and transport this blood with oxygen back to the heart, outside the heart from the iota to the rest of the body. So the question is, which of the four chambers of the heart pumps blood to the lungs? We have that one there, that is the pulmonary artery. This one will be our left ventricle, uh, right ventricle, and that is our right, right atrium and right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. So our, the right uh, atrium will pump blood to the lungs. So giving us the answer A, the right auricle. The other word for artery, artery is auricle. So A becomes our first, our, our best answer that will, the right auricle will pump blood from the heart to the lungs. We have question 33. Which of the following thermometers is used in hospitals? A, maximum and minimum thermometer. A maximum and minimum thermometer will record the high and the low temperature in a given place at a given time. This will not be used at a hospital. Then we have B, a laboratory thermometer. This is used in a laboratory and not at the clinic or at the hospital. Then we have D, uh, C, dry and wet bulb. This is used to measure humidity. That is the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. Then we have D, a clinical thermometer. This is used to measure the body temperature. So our best answer there is D, a clinical Thermometer is used in hospitals. 35, 34, sorry. Question 34. Elena classified an animal as having the following features. A, one, moist skin. B, cold-blooded. And the other one lives on land and in water. Which type of animal did the Lena describe? Options, we have A, amphibian, B, bait, C, mammals, and D, reptile. We are looking for an animal which the, this Lena was looking at, which has a moist skin, is cold-blooded, lives on land and in water. So, amphibians. Amphibians, these are vertebrates. They are cold blooded. They lay eggs in water. And they live both on land and in water. A bed, a bed is a warm blooded animal. It has feathers, it has a dry skin, it has no sweat glands. Then mammals, these are warm-blooded, they are born alive, and they have a backbone. Reptiles, These are vertebrates, cold-blooded, and 
and they lay eggs on land. So this lane I was looking at one which has moist skin, cold blooded, and lays lives in on land and in water. The best example of this description is a frog that is now an amphibian. So th this description gives us shows us that this was an amphibian because these are characteristics of an amphibian. Question 35. A family. A family closed all the doors and windows before going to sleep, but forgot to put the brazier in the kitchen, to put out the brazier in the kitchen. Everyone died. A. All the air finished. B. The room was full of smoke. C. They suffocated. D. They were bent. A tells us that all the air finished. There was still air in the room. Not, no, we were not specified what kind of air was in the room, but there was air in the room. Then the room was full of smoke. We are not told that the air, the room was full of smoke. They suffocated or, or they were bent. Our best answer there is C. They suffocated because the room had run out of oxygen. The oxygen was all used up by the brazier and the, fam the people from that family, all of them were using that oxygen. So the room ran out of oxygen and these people suffocated. That is why they died. So our best answer there is C. Question 36. Study the diagram of the eclipse below. The diagram, something like this. We have the sun there, the moon, and the earth. This is an eclipse of, an eclipse, in other words, means an obstruction. So in this diagram that we have, this light from the sun was obstructed by the moon from reaching the earth. The moon goes round the earth, its orbit is short, as well as the earth moves round the sun. The sun does not move at all, and it is the only source of light. So there are times when the moon and the earth and the sun, they all come into a straight line. When they're in the straight line, the sun's light will not reach the earth as it is showing. So this shows that this is an eclipse of the earth. Uh, the earth. This is an eclipse of the sun and not the earth. This is the eclipse of the sun because the, sun, the sun's light could not reach the earth. Okay, so 27. Before I move to 37, we also have the lunar eclipse. That is the eclipse of the moon in case it comes in the exam. We have the sun. The earth comes in the middle and the moon is at the end. So the sun's light will not reach the moon and that is now the lunar eclipse, which is the eclipse of the moon. Let's move on to 37 at this time. Why is seed dispersal important in plants? 37 says, why is seed dispersal important in plants. What is seed dispersal, first of all? This is the movement of seeds from the parent plant. 
How do these seeds move? They can move either by wind, water, they can be moved by animals or heat. That is, they can explode due to the heat. So, why is seed dispersal important? A. It avoids overcrowding of plants. B. Helps plants to grow taller. C. Keeps plants at one place. And D. Makes plants to bear more fruits. Our best answer there is A. This avoids overcrowding of plants in one place. Seeds will move from one place to another. So our best option there is A. 38. Which of the following lists contains organs of the digestive system? Which of the following cons lists contains organs of the digestive system? The digestive system look something like like this okay something like that we have the large intestines and the small intestines so we are looking for that which has the organs of the digestive system. A, it has large intestines, lungs, and the anus. B, liver, stomach, and heart. C, pancreas, small intestines, and rectum. And D, stomach, pancreas, and lungs. Let's look at A. Large intestines, lungs, and anus. We have lungs there. The lungs are not part of the digestive system. Lungs are found in the circulatory system. That is the movement of blood in the body. Then B. So A is not our answer because it has lungs there. Then B. It has liver, stomach, and heart. The heart is also found in the circulatory system. So the heart pumps the blood to all parts of the body. So B also is not our best answer there. Then we come to C. Pancreas, small intestines, and rectum. C is our best answer. Let's look at D. Stomach, pancreas, and lungs. Uh, this option has lungs. Lungs which are also part of the circulatory system. So our best option there is C. That is pancreas, small intestines, and the rectum. Thirty-nine. Question thirty-nine. It has a pot there on fire. like that okay so the question says which of the parts marked one two three and four are made of good insulators first of all what is an insulator an insulator is a material that does not allow heat or electricity to pass through. Okay. 
let me write that again okay a newsletter is a material that does not allow heat to pass through okay so which one would not allow heat to pass through one two three and four one is a lid with a noble there and two this uh, that is a, a metal lid four that is the pot itself and one that is those are handles so which one is a material that would not allow heat to pass through mostly the noble of the lid there usually is an insulator sometimes it's made of plastic sometimes it's made of wood even the handles there so that the person using the pot is not bent so our best option there is one and three these are uh, materials with the insulators we go to question 40 the challenge faced by farmers who use chemical fertilizers is that chemical fertilizer a absorbs more water b does not provide uh, required nutrients c is not easily absorbed by plants and D spoils this uh, the soil. Uh, first of all, what is chemical fertilizer? This is the inorganic fertilizer or artificial fertilizer. Fertilizer that we can buy from shops. This is now the chemical fertilizer. So how does it work? It absorbs more water. That is not our best option. Then B does not provide required nutrients to this uh, nutrients. It is a fertilizer and it provides the nutrients, but B still is not our best answer. Then C is not easily absorbed by plants. It is absorbed by plants, but it is not our best answer. So our best answer there is D, which says it spoils the soil because it contains chemicals in it. Uh, chemical fertilizer contains chemicals and these chemicals easily spoils the soil. So our best answer there is D. Question 41. Which of the following? Which of the following shows the part of Zambia where cattle is not reared and the reason for this? We have area on the other side and reason. We have A, uh, Bambuulu swamps. The reason for not rearing cattle there were given foot and mouth disease. Then B, Barose plains because of the tick and tick infested. Then Gwembe Valley anthrax and D, Luangwa Valley because of sese flies. Our best option there is D. In the Luangwa Valley, there are a lot of sese flies. In Balose Plains, people don't usually rear cattle because that land is sandy and it's hot. They don't have enough grass for the cattle. The Bangweulu swamps, foot and mouth disease, these are, can be maintained and they are cured. But in Luangwa Valley, sese flies always infest on the uh, keto. Question 41. In which part of the alimentary canal is water mainly absorbed? In which part of the alimentary canal is water mainly absorbed? Uh, let me just go back to my diagram where I, I roughly drew the alimentary canal. These were the large intestines. large intestines and these are small small intestines and we have the rectum there okay 
So in which part of the alimentary canal is water mainly absorbed? The large intestines. The large intestines stores water. That is the function of the large intestines. The liver, uh, this one helps digest fat. It produces bile that digests the, fast, the fats. And small intestines, this is mainly where food absorption occurs. Then we have the stomach. The stomach, this is where food is stored. So large intestines are the ones that store water in the alimentary canal. The other name for alimentary canal is the, uh, the digestive system. We move on to question 43. 43. Study the diagram below showing a flower and an insect. How does the flower and the insect benefit from each other? We have a bee there sucking nectar from the flower. So how does the bee benefit from the, fl from the flower? And how does the bee benefit from the flower? Benefits by the flower from the bee. That is A, fertilization, and benefits by the insects, it says it produces honey, and B, pollination, and sucks nectar, C, fertilization, and sucks nectar, and D, pollination and honey production. First of all, what is fertilization? Fertilization is where the time when the male sex cells and the female sex cells are joined. That is where fertilization will occur. Then pollination. Pollination, this is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a flower. So the bee is one of the agents of pollination transfer. A bee can help to transfer pollen from the anther to the stigma. The bee will help to poll uh, pollinate the flower, and as the bee is pollinating that flower, it will also suck the nectar from the flower. So our best option there is B. The flower will benefit uh, by being pollinated, and the bee will benefit by sucking the nectar. So our best answer there is B. 44. Which of the following soils retains water for a long time? Which of the following soils retains water for a long time? That is question 44. Our options are A, clay soil, B, loam soil, C, sandy soil, and D, stone. In clay soil, the particles are compacted. They are so close together such that it is difficult for water to pass through. Then we have loam soil. The particles are a bit loose. Water will drain steadily. It will not just flow at, at, a, at a fast rate, but it will steadily pass through. Then we have sandy soil. The particles are loose and they are big, uh, quite big, which are loose and far apart from each other. And water will easily drain through in this soil. So, the, and the stone, stones, these are, the particles are big and water will easily drain away from this type of soil. So the question says, which of the following soils retains water for a long time? Our best option there is A, which is clay soil. Clay soil will retain water for a long time because the particles are so close together and water will not easily pass through these particles. Question 46. Which of the following is not a health risk associated with early sexual activities? 
which of the following is not a health risk associated with early sexual activities? A. Cervical cancer. B. Pregnancy. C. HIV AIDS. And D. Hips widen. We are looking for one which is not a healthy risk. When we look at cervical cancer, cancer our option A, that one is a healthy risk. B, pregnancy, it is also a healthy risk if it is uh, acquired at an early stage, that is early sexual activity. And then HIV AIDS is also a healthy risk. But if you look at sex, uh, option D, that hips widen though that is not uh, a healthy risk. So our best option there is D. Hips widen is not an, a, a, an, uh, a risk that is associated with early sexual activities. Question 47. Question 47 reads, So water is important for... Soil water is important for A, germination and transpiration. Germination, this is the seed growth from the, the plant, for a plant. Then transpiration, this is when plants lose water through the leaves by water vapor. Then B, respiration and photosynthesis. Respiration, this is, it involves breathing in and out. And photosynthesis, this is the process by which plants make their own food. Option C, transpiration and respiration. We say uh, respiration, transpiration is where plants lose water through the leaves in form of water vapor. And respiration is the breathing in and out. Then option D, photosynthesis and germination. So photosynthesis is the process by which plants make their own food and germination is where a plant seed growing into a plant. So we are looking for the importance of water in the soil. D, which is photosynthesis and germination. Option D becomes our best answer because a plant will need water for it to make it, uh, for the uh, plant to grow and to make its own food. That is photosynthesis and germination. Option A says germination and transpiration. We don't want the pl this uh, plant to lose water. Transpiration involves the loss of water. B, there is respiration that is breathing in and out. That is That does not happen in plants. Then C, it also involves transpiration which is the loss of water. So option D, which is giving us the importance of water, that is photosynthesis and germination is our best option. Question 47, 48, sorry. Question 48. Below a list of seeds used as food. Below a list of seeds used as food we have one beans beans ground nuts and peas then two we have maize beans and sorghum Three, we have soya, soya beans. Millet and rice. Then four, we have rice, beans and maize. The question is, which list consists of seeds which are sources of protein. We have seeds that are used as food. These are in groups of cereals and 
legumes. Cereals, these are uh, seeds like rice, maize, and sorghum. Now, we are looking for that which is a good source of proteins. These are good for carbohydrates. So, beans, groundnuts, and peas, these are good for proteins. So, option one, that is A, which has a list from number one, which contain, consists of beans, groundnuts, and peas, becomes our best answer because those foods, those seeds contain protein. A is our best answer there. Question 49. 49. The diagram below shows circulate, circulating. The diagram below shows blood circulating in the body. The diagram looks like this. We have the heart. Blood vessel there. Then we have lungs. What blood vessel is at X? What blood vessel is at X? X is our blood vessel there. We had a diagram there showing the heart, the heart with its four chambers. Blood will move to the lungs there. This will be the lungs. That is the pulmonary artery. So the pulmonary artery will, is the blood vessel that will move blood from the heart to the lungs. In the lungs where gaseous exchange will occur. The pulmonary artery is the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood. The pulmonary artery is the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood and it carries this blood to the lungs where gaseous exchange will occur and the blood will be transferred to the pulmonary vein with the, where, where it will now get the oxygen and the cycle of circulation continues. So let's look at our options there. We have A, the iota, B, the pulmonary vein, and C, the pulmonary artery, and D, the vena cava. Pulmonary vein, which is option B, is our best answer there. Question 50. Our last question. The diagram below shows a cuboid. It shows a cuboid which has four centimeters there, three, five, and three. The volume of the cuboid is uh, how the formula for finding volume of a cuboid that is V signifying volume is length multiplied by breadth and height. So we have our measurements we have five, we have three for breadth. Sorry, our length is five multiplied by. 4 and multiplied by 3. 4 multiplied by 3 will give us 20, and 20 multiplied by 3, that will give us 60 centimeter cubed. So the volume for that cuboid there is 60 centimeter cubed. A cuboid is different from a cube because a cube has all its, the, the, all the sides are the same, and the volume for a cube is L to the power 3 because all the sides are equal and the, the, the length will be multiplied by 3. But for now, our answer was 60 centimeters for the cuboid. That is the end of our revision exercise. I hope you have learned a lot.
Thank you very much. Okay, let me know how it goes. I will. I need to go now. And don't forget to check up on your brother. Ziba, mommy. I will. I really need to go. Nisa Chedwa. And also wish your dad a happy birthday. Bye. Ish, my mom. She never stops talking, but I'm not complaining because I love our conversations. And MTN's 777 just for you makes life and communication so much easier. especially for a student like me cuz sini sevenza just yet so with 777 just for you i get special discounted data and voice bundles that allow me to do my school work with ease and keep up with the latest trends online i get to call my family and friends plus there's also a gift folder to cut the long story short i talk more and browse longer that's my mom I bet a video called my dad and brother before class. MTN gives you so much more with 777 just for you. Enjoy amazing day and night bundles, super fast 4G data bundles, loco nilaka and more. Plus, you also get a special gift from us. Simply dial star 777 hash and select an offer of your choice. Sekelela, we are on your side. MTN.